Good morning, adventurers, and welcome back to my channel. Last night I pulled into this free campsite just outside of Biosphere 2. And as you can see, it's a wonderful, vast, open space. But last night when I got here, I got here at the perfect time. It was just about sunset and it was gorgeous. And uh, this is what that looked like. I'm planning on going over there, but you'll see that on another episode. Instead, I wanted to talk about today how I have been powering all of my adventures. Now, you might have seen this guy before. However, I've been wanting to tell you more about somebody else. You know, th this guy, this guy, the Blue Eddie right here. Now, the Blue Eddie and I have been traveling for the entirety of this trip. I started this trip in January. It is now March. And so finally, I feel confident in talking to you about it a little bit more. But before I do, I'm, I'm gonna make my bed real quick because, uh, you know, we gotta get a good start on the day. Wah! Okay, all better. And now it's time to talk about the Blue Eddy EB55. This is a 700 watt power station. And I have been using this for just about everything. Now, I always follow the ABCs of charging, so I'm always charging at least one power station. But in that rotation, I need something that can always be powering my fridge. So it was necessary to have a secondary power station. Now the interesting thing about the Blue Eddy is that it has a few extra features that some of my other power stations do not have. So I'm gonna walk you through some of those and also talk about what all I can actually run off of this thing and what I have been running off of this thing. Now I will say this, the Blue Eddy is a very awesome power station. I have been super pleased with it. In fact, since I have been using it, I have been using it on a daily basis, sitting right here on my back unit. The reason why I wanted to place it right here is because every single night I edit in my van. And in doing so, I need something that I can plug my laptop directly into and not be worried about if it's going to also affect my fridge because I have pulled all the power out of something. So having this right here, I can just plug in, I can sit up against my back door and I can go editing away, no problem. But something else that is a game changer is this right here. It says wireless charging. I can actually put my phone on top of this when it's not in its case and it will charge. This is very handy because while I have it sitting over here, while I'm charging my laptop, I can actually just place my phone on top and be charging it as well. So what else can we charge? Well, a lot of different things. In fact, this is the input area right here. So there are two different kinds of cords that you have that can actually come in and charge your power station. And then over here we have a DC output and additionally we have two 12 volt outputs. We have four regular plugins. We have four USB A's and then we also have a USB C right here. And each one of those areas is controlled 
independently. Now, whenever you turn on each and every one of them, you can start to draw power from them. Something that I do like about this though. So say your cell phone is completely charged. Typically, if it was on the Jackery or even the Rock Pals, what it's going to do is it's going to continue to be activated and turned on and thus pulling a tiny, tiny bit of a draw still, even if it's just one or two watts. On the Blue Eddy though, when this bad boy is finish charging, that actual port turns off to reduce the power output that is unnecessarily being used. So that is a huge win. So what do I think overall of the Blue Eddy's overall size and weight? That's a big question because I know a lot of people really are looking for something that's going to be a bit more compact and also can fit into more spaces. Well the nice thing about the Blue Eddy as you can see is it's nice and square. The handle itself itself can pop up and down for easy carrying, but whenever you're not using it, it actually stores away, making it a perfect little brick. So it can fit literally anywhere, guys. This thing is great for compact. Not to mention, it's not that heavy. So as you can see, the Blue Eddy, super, super handy, but I'm gonna show you a few other things that I charge on a regular basis using this, and also how I charge it while going down the road. I think this is super important, and if you're looking for a smaller power station, this is a good one. This is a very, very good one. It is absolutely the perfect fit for what I personally was needing in the back of my van. I mean, it matches and everything. Come on, hey. <laughs> they do have these available though in other colors, which I also liked. But uh, enough of that. Let's go and do some testing of the Blue Eddy. Always be charging. Got the Blue Eddy plugged in right now and it is actually pulling watts, but I'm sharing it with the power strip of other things in the pit of despair in my van. So it's gonna take it a little while, but you can kind of see how it works here. As you can see, it goes up and as it's moving, it moves in 20% increments all the way to the top. So that's kind of how that works. Normally, whenever this is plugged in by itself, it pulls in about 70 to 80 watts. But um, again, I'm splitting the power right now. Now the Blue Eddy can also be charged before you leave base camp so that you can get all the way up to the max capacity or by a solar panel through using a solar adapter. No big deal. I just choose to always be charging ABC while I'm driving and so usually that keeps it in a pretty good position. I have run it all the way down though before and right now it's it's pretty close to low just because I didn't charge it for a couple of days but all in all I really 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 love the simplicity of this design and as you can see it just kind of fits into my little spot here. I have it in a space that is kind of secure and no big deal. Now one thing I will add though from a person's perspective who uses power pretty frequently. Sometimes these little 20% blocks can be a bit deceiving. Let me explain. Say you're charging your power station and you get it to 60%. Now, is it actually 60%? or is it closer to 80%? There's a 20% swing within those power blocks that can be a little bit confusing. So I always try to max it out and just leave it going for a little bit of extra time just to make sure it's completely topped off. Also, if you're down to 20% on the bars, are you really down to 20% or are you down to 5%? There's no way of differentiating this. So that would be the only downside I could see to the Blue Eddy design. Otherwise, I like the squareness. I like the size of it when it comes to lifting it. I like that I can run almost every single thing I could ever imagine on it. And I really like that it has the color options. So those are all things. But um, I'm gonna show you some more of the things that I use the Blue Eddy for. Let's go. Now, time and time again, you guys have seen me charging my laptop off of the Blue Eddy because it sits right here whenever I am in parked mode at whatever campsite that I happen to be at. But I also use it for a variety of other things pretty commonly. Okay, we're gonna start off by turning on the power station. You'll see that it is fully charged. I did go ahead and plug this in using shore power so I could get it all the way up to the tip top, which is what I like to do when I'm at base camp or at a campsite where I can plug in physically. However, I can again also plug this in while driving 
driving and I do that pretty often using the ABCs, always be charging. This is the input right here. Whenever you're using shore power, it plugs into this little port. Whenever you're using your car charger, it actually plugs in using this port right here. Let's start off by talking about something we all use, a cell phone. I use this thing nonstop and so I'm always having to charge it up. This is pretty nice because with the new iPhones, they actually have a charging brick, but they also have the USB-C. And on this, you can plug it in on either one of them. So I'm going to show you what the difference is whenever I'm plugging it in when it comes to how much power it actually pulls. Of course, to start this process out, we just plug it into the phone itself. And then I'm going to start off with the actual power brick right here. And we're going to turn on the AC converter right here. And here we go into we are now officially charging and it looks as though it is pulling about seven watts now it does kind of fluctuate it turns off and on so it goes between seven to ten watts on average using this side right here but we're about to plug it into the usb-c and see what it does now a lot of devices are moving to the USB-C and because of that, I think it was really smart for them to add this port in. So let's see what we do. We're plugging in and we do in fact get the signal as soon as we push the button that we are now charging. And you'll see on this side, it only pulls between again, eight and 10 watts. But I have noticed on this side that it does cycle down quite a bit more. And so typically the average, once it's charging for a considerable amount of time, does in fact fall on this one. Initially it starts out looking a little bit higher, but then it drops down. I typically average on my cell phone about seven watts whenever it's charging on the USB-C. Now, if it tells you anything, if we're taking a good average number there, we're pulling about 10 watts per hour. It usually doesn't take me a full hour because I never let it get all the way to the bottom of the charge before I put it on the charger. But you know, that's, that's 10 watts per hour. So that means that going at this rate, going at this rate, that means that I could charge my cell phone over 20 times, no problem, if that's the only thing I'm plugging in. Now, something else you've seen me use a lot here on the channel is actually this guy right here. This is my Road Pro. My Road Pro is wonderful because I can actually use it while I'm driving down the road. But in some circumstances, I do actually need to be able to plug this in at my campsite in order to cook. And I need to be able to do that using my power station. Now, can the Blue Eddy EB55 run this guy right here? Now, anything that has to do with heat is going to be a higher ticket item when it comes to power. So let's see. I will give you a little spoiler alert. Yes, yes it does work. And uh, I've used it a couple times while cooking in this bad boy at camp on bad weather days. Let me show you. Now, in order to make this one work, we're actually going to be plugging into the DC outlet here. And all we do is we just pull out the cord and plug it in. After we plug it in, we're going to turn on this power port. And if you'll notice right here, it's kind of hard to read because of the shadow, but it is starting to warm up. Now, as this thing warms up, it does go up a little bit in value. It starts out usually around 90, but it does get up to anywhere between 150 and 175 on the high end. Typically though, it's going to bounce right here around the 130s. But yes, this thing can in fact run it for a long enough amount of time for you to cook a full meal. And just to kind of convert this for you guys, if you were using the Blue Eddy just for your cooking and using the Rode Pro, 170 watts is the top out on this. So if you're topping it out at 170 watts on a 700 watt power station, that means that you're getting anywhere between three and four cooking sessions using the Rode Pro and cooking those meals without any other power. So that's pretty good. That is pretty good indeed. But now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the one thing that sucks away most of my power in life, my laptop. This guy right here might seem small and it might seem mighty in that it can edit a lot of videos, but unfortunately because of the software that I have to use, I constantly am draining my battery. And because of that, I am always 
having to charge it. Now, my original reason for being so excited about the Blue Eddy was because I could dedicate it to this guy right here. This guy who sucks away my life of power. But I found out over time that I could use this and all of these other devices using the Blue Eddy, and it was super, super handy. So let me show you what I'm talking about and let me explain a little bit more. First and foremost, there's a reason why when you read any power station box, it says you're gonna get very few full charges on a laptop. Just, just gonna say that. I can typically get about three full charges on this laptop using the Blue Eddy. And I consider that to be a huge win because even though it pulls less power than the Rode Pro, it has to be charging for a longer amount of time. Now, this laptop right here is a little bit older, so that's part of that. The battery is a bit weaker because I've been using it for a long time. But because, again, of the software that I use to edit videos and do all of my photos and things like that, those are high demand items. Items. So they just pull the power on down. So three charges using the Blue Eddy is a win for me in this particular regard. Now a typical laptop, you're probably going to get about six full charges on because you're not using the high demand software. So that's kind of the comparison. But let me, let me show you. Let's start out with the power brick itself. The power brick is very interesting. And one of the things that I like about Apple is they do have this power brick where you can actually replace the plug which is kind of cool but also this power brick kind of keeps everything from getting overwhelmingly hot as it charges now again this is an older laptop so you'll notice that this color on the cord right here is a little off because i have been using it for so long and as you use these power cords they do slowly break down over time and also the power delivery is not quite as good so that could be part of my personal issue however let me show you the actual plug and play and how many watts we're pulling okay so to plug it in we're just going to take our little apple cord here and plug it into the side then we're going to take our power brick and again we're just going to place it onto the AC output side right here and then we are going to turn on the output which is right here now when we do this we start out pulling six watts and then it starts to go up just a little bit it's gonna bounce around considerably now the max that this is going to start pulling is going to be about 45 watts whenever it is in this stow and go mode like this it's going to pull fewer watts to charge it however as soon as i open it up and start working with it on it's going to go crazy because again those high output softwares are really going to start playing with its emotions and realistically that is any power station when you're actually physically working on editing it just starts sucking the power down so faster than you can input it it is taking it away so my tip to you guys is if you are charging a laptop device charge it like this then use it take a break charge it like this it's going to maximize your ability to use your power station for a longer amount of time trust me on this one just just trust me on this one i, I don't know why it's this way just just this way and i've been using this now for three months and loving it because i've been doing that okay next up let's talk about this fan right here i use this pretty much everywhere in the van especially during summertime because it has three different settings and this clip i can put it anywhere that I need to have some kind of cool breeze or circulation which is really awesome but this also has to be charged from time to time and I do so using a power station so if I'm plugging this into the Blue Eddy today we would just plug in right here turn on the power station and again it's a little bit of a glare but it's fluctuating between three and four watts on average. Now, the thing I really like about this is because it's such a low draw, I can actually use it while it is plugged in. So if it is a super hot night where I know I'm going to need tons of power just to run this thing so it keeps going, I can plug it into here and run it all night long on even the highest of power settings and I don't get too hot during summer. So that's kind of nice. Not to mention, if you notice, we have this nice, little handle right here. I can clip it to the handle and then face it toward me while I'm in the van, while I'm laying down. And this is about head height whenever I have my pillow up. And then I have a fan that circulates air directly on me, which is 
a hidden bonus. So again, let's do a little bit of creative math here. Four watts tops, let's say five. Five watts per hour. You have 700 watts. I can run this thing easily all night. I can run it easily for two nights. I can run this easily for three nights if I'm not plugging anything else in. So that is a huge win, having that much ability to keep circulating and keep cool during the hot months. I love that. Not to mention the other power stations that I have tried and used here on the channel, you'll notice that they don't have the same kind of handle. They have a static handle that you cannot adjust, fold, or move. And this one is the only power station that I have seen that you can do that with, which is very nice because that creates a nice flat surface on top that I can place things on that I can actually use also. So obviously the power station looks like this. It has this nice carrying handle, but then I can place it into the full down position and this makes a nice flat surface. Now one of the things that I like about this is typically whenever I am in the back of the van I can use it to put things on top for example I could place this on top of it if I need to not while I'm cooking but just regular I can also place my camera on top of it while I'm in sleep mode so that it's not in the way and I really love that so as you can see that is super 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 handy and I'm really enjoying the blue Eddy for sure the EB 55 has been wonderful addition to my setup and I've been able to go all sorts of places and have that additional power which is powering me into new adventures especially when it comes to my laptop and that high demand item it's really great to have it and also to be able to set it in a position in the back where I don't have to worry about all of that. Again, I always encourage you guys to do the ABCs, always be charging. So if you do have a Blue Eddy and you do happen to have another power station, you can rotate between the two of them, or you could just get two Blue Eddies. That would totally work also. That way, while you're charging one, you can be using the other. Not to mention, if you do plug in two power and you're at like a static campground, you can actually use the Blue Eddy while you're charging it. Wow, right? So uh, yeah, if you have enjoyed coming along with me guys to see the Blue Eddy, I want you to check out these final little images here of just how cool it really is. Again, I really like the fact that I have a blue one, but there are other colors available, so check these out. And uh, leave a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and if you have any questions about the Blue Eddy, let me know. Bye guys. Bye.